Grazie mille, once again, it's a pleasure to be here. I didn't ask for the change in the program, but I will be happy to share another session. Do we need the LDS? It's a good question. As I wrote in a recent editorial, I started with this. It's a good question. I like to speak about the LDS because when we make rounds at the bedside, I know what we mean when we speak about a patient with LDS. I know we will speak about severe respiratory failure. It's the same thing when people speak about sepsis. I know we will speak about the bad infection with associated organ dysfunction. But we must realize that ALDS is not an illness. And everybody agrees and they say, yeah, 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 but you know, the patient is sick, the patient has ALDS, that is disease. Well, 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 it's just a syndrome. We just call ALDS bilateral infiltrates associated with hypoxemia and no evidence of left heart failure. It's basically an altered permeability type of uh, lung edema. But then the question comes, what kind of treatment do we have? And of course, a number of my friends say, oh, Jean-Louis, of course, we learned so much about the respiratory management of ALDS. Well, we learned how to protect the lungs and how to avoid iatrogenicity. Now, did we discover that low tidal volumes are really a beneficial effect? Or did we learn that the large tidal volume is harmful? I think it is the latter. And we learned that this can be true in patients without ARDS. It's not specific of ARDS. We learned from Dr. Futier, who is here, that even during surgery, we should use protective ventilation. And Dr. Pelosi and others would also agree with that. So we need to always protect the lungs, whether there is ARDS or no ALDS. Admittedly, if lung inflammation is severe, this may be even more important than when the lungs are not inflamed, but it is still true in all cases of mechanical ventilation. We should always use low tidal volumes in some people whatever the level that we could discuss further. Now, for a clinical trial one day, we were actually criticized by the principal investigator. We say, ha, 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 in Brussels, you use the tidal volume of 8.5 cc's per kilogram in this patient with LDS. I said, yeah, mm -hmm. let's go back and see what happened. Because that's against Ah, the law. But, you know, when you have a patient with ALDS who is clearly improving, who may actually be on the respirator with some spontaneous breathing or even walking around with the respirator, it's another story. We don't want to keep the patient sedated, paralyzed, to limit the tidal volume. So that's the opposition I make between protocolized care and intelligent care. It's not six cc's per kilogram for everybody. It is small tidal volumes for everybody treated by mechanical ventilation. Now, what else is really specific for ARDS? Well, nothing, even looking at driving pressure Again, it may apply to every patient with respiratory failure. We spoke about the high frequency association and our disappointments. 
because in clinical trials, either there was no difference in outcome or perhaps there was a worse outcome. So I wrote this editorial. Is it the end of the story? And it may very well be because we could not identify the specific situation where perhaps it could be helpful. So you may say if we do not identify ARDS, we may miss the use of prone positioning. I disagree because we all recognize very severe hypoxemia. So I was actually um, quite, uh, yeah, no, that's uh, okay. So um, people even do not always use prone positioning, but there may be some good reasons for that. In the surgical patient, it may be difficult to apply it. Or in severe RDS, we need to use neuromuscular blocking agents, and of course, Dr. Papazian is the world expert on this. I'm not sure we need to use it in every patient with severe RDS. Dr. Papazian said himself at the end of the paper, we need to find confirmatory results. And indeed, the North Americans started with the PITAL network, the ROSE study, which is ongoing, reevaluating the role of systemic early neuromuscular blockade. So although severe RDS with severe hypoxemia is always recognized, we should not necessarily apply a rigid protocol to treat it. That's my point. Now, very quickly, we can look at pharmacological interventions in ARDS. We can look at inhaled therapies. There are a number of things we could inhale, starting with inhaled nitric oxide that may improve gas exchange, but we know that it does not really improve survival when applied routinely. We know of uh, surfactant. We have not been very successful with surfactant administration in ARDS. We know about even liquid ventilation that we started a number of years ago. You can put an animal in these perfluorocarbon solutions and you keep them there for a while and then you take the animal and throw it away and the animal is still alive. So that may be a way to have some anti-inflammation in the lungs. It didn't work. Beta-2 adrenergic agents applied routinely. There is a rationale for it, but it may create harm. We should not give beta-stimulating agents routinely in patients with ALES. So if we go for systemic therapies, you know, beta-2 agonists, since I just cited them, when in the BALT-2 study, they resulted in worse outcomes. Don't use beta-stimulating agents intravenously, routinely, in patients with ALDS. Corticosteroids, corticosteroids, yeah, I can speak about corticosteroids, but Dr. Papazian will speak about it, so I will skip all these slides on corticosteroids. I will just indicate what I think. I think there may be a place for corticosteroids in the RDS because if sepsis is a form of dysregulated host response with some pro and some anti-inflammatory facets, at the end of the day, ARDS is primarily inflammation in the lungs. So some form of anti-inflammatory strategy should work. But the corticosteroids have their side effects, of course, including acquired weakness. So perhaps we need to find an anti-inflammatory agent without the side effects of corticosteroids. As in the American study, as you know, there was perhaps a better lung function, but more weakness of the patients. So prostaglandin E1, ah, I 
doesn't work. Sorry. Ah, oh, we could try ketoconazole. It doesn't work. Sorry. What about pentoxifiline? Doesn't work. Sorry. What about nutrition? No, neutrophil elastase inhibitor. It doesn't work. What about statins? Ah, statins are good for everything, right? <laughs> well, 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 it didn't work. Now, I suppose Dr. Uh, Kalfi, who is here, spoke about her analysis of some data showing that perhaps in a subgroup of ARDS patients with very strong pro-inflammatory response, it may protect. I think it's a nice approach, which shows, again, that we need to look at well-defined patient populations. But globally, it doesn't work. Pharmaconutrition, we thought we had some special solutions that could improve the outcome of patients with ARDS, and unfortunately, no, it doesn't work. Perhaps we could even keep the patient undernourished now. That's the new thing. Permissive underfeeding. Ah, it's even better to feed your patient less. And acetylcysteine, procysteine, doesn't work. You could try some other antioxidants, but who knows? Keratinocyte growth factor, it doesn't work, I'm sorry. Well, okay, I will stop my list here, but we all understand that this is really too heterogeneous. It's just a syndrome. Now, we may perhaps find substances that could limit the inflammation in the lungs, like interferon beta. And this is the, uh, the summary of a small study looking at interferon beta in patients with ARDS, where Dr. Ballingen showed that there may be an improvement in survival rates. Very small study. So we embarked in a larger study of 300 patients from various European countries, including Italy. And unfortunately, as you may have heard, the study was negative. So we are left with very few things. Maybe sometimes corticosteroids, maybe muscle relaxants in severe RDS. We even tried aspirin. Ah, that's good. That's simple. There may be a signal there. If we give it early, maybe aspirin could limit the severity of ARDS. Oh, oh, oh sorry. No, that was the LIPS A study giving aspirin early and didn't work. The best prevention is perhaps to be diabetic. <laughs> so I need to reach a conclusion here, which is that we should perhaps stop looking for a specific therapy in ARDS, except if it's something that could limit permeability uh, alterations. But if we look at causes of death, at autopsy, we know it's not always the typical diffuse alveolar damage. In our study many years ago, we found it was present in one half of the patients with ARDS, and the same thing has been found by others. So if we look at the causes of death, it's not really hypoxemia, it's more um, the uh, global alterations in uh, uh, organ function of these patients. So, do we need ARDS? Well, again, I like to speak about ARDS, but I'm not so sure that once we have put the label ARDS, we have done anything really good. When Dr. Balami published this, people say, ha ha, the clinicians do not identify RDS very well. Ha ha, look, they don't know at the bedside. But what are the implications? Once you say that your patient has a RDS, there is no implication. Except perhaps, as I wrote here, if you look for a cause. Always try to find a cause that could be treated. Don't turn the knobs too much 
trying to reduce iatrogenicity, of course, is important, but the ventilator support is just a support of the patient and nothing else. So the future is in the better patient identification, looking at phenotypes. This is just the first approach, the approach of Dr. Kalfi and others. We could actually find some biomarkers that could more specifically help us to move up from poorly designed patient populations to personalized medicine. I don't think we'll get to precision medicine very soon, but personalized medicine is what should be our target. So avoid iatrogenicity, and there is no specific treatment except treating the cause when we can. I'm afraid it is just a syndrome. Grazie mille.